It's your Daily Dose of Donna. Welcome to the show. Today is Tuesday, July 25th. We are nearing the end of July. When does August start? Next week? Is there 30 days, 31 days in July? These are the things that I should know. But just like geography, never really was knowledgeable in it. So I am um, I'm here to admit that I am a blonde and proud. It's funny because you guys, the people that are watching are always like, you're so witty, you're so on it. And I'm like, thank you so much. I feel the same. But I have absolutely no idea where Utah is on a map. So there's, you know, there's positives and negatives. Welcome to everyone on TikTok watching live. If you're watching here on YouTube, welcome to the show. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for subscribing. I am getting closer and closer to 7,000. That's my next big goal. I have a few hundred left to get to 7,000 and it would be, just be, that's a lucky number seven. Welcome. If you aren't following me already on TikTok and Instagram at this is Donna Bowling. And then of course my free Facebook group, Daily Dose of Donna. Shout out by the way to my Patreon community. I have 70 eight patrons. Huge, 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 really big deal. I it, It's beyond that you guys support me that way. I love it. And I'm dropping a really good episode next, not next, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I'll drop another episode where we are going to go deep, deeper into topics that I've touched on on the show. And I'm going to touch on again a little bit today. Tomorrow's episode will be about Bethany and the resurgence of Bethany all over your screens, whether or not you want them. Um, we're going to talk about Heather McDonald and Justin Martindale, the big drama, and I'll, I'll touch on it today. And then, of course, we'll go into the John and Kate Plus 8 because I watched that Vice special and I told you guys I was going to deep dive it and chat about that. Okay. So that's my homework for today. So let's start with a couple new things that happened yesterday. I went to um, I went to see Barbie. I told you I went to see Barbie with my sons. We went to the Grove here in Los Angeles. Very fun, very cute outdoor mall. Lots of stuff going on. Lots of people. It's summertime, hot, hot, hot here in LA. Um, we did a fun little few fun little things, and then we went into the movie theater and we did our little Barbie. Um, you know, step and repeat situation. I'll tell you guys, there is an energy right now at the movies and I'll tell you what it is. The, the, the movie theaters are bustling and it's so fun because right now there's all these great movies out, right? There's Oppenheimer, there's Barbie, Mission Impossible is still there. What other big movies are there? Is there another like really big movie? I feel like those are the top three. And it's bringing people to the theaters. They're making a lot of money. I saw a Monday, 2.45 p.m. theater uh, um, screening of Barbie, and it wasn't a small theater, and it was almost full. 2.45 on a Monday. Oh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, but Lance said Indiana Jones wasn't good. Am I, am I wrong there? I'm not an Indiana Jones person, so, like, that wouldn't be – I wouldn't know. Um but all these big movies, it's so fun. It feels very like summer blockbuster, like Jurassic Park. Remember that from 1991 or 1992? I'll never forget going to see that in the theater for my birthday in June. Um, it's great. I loved it. So lots of people, lots of, you know, lions and fun and good energy in the movie. Okay, Barbie. Um, I have to say I really liked it. I thought it was adorable. Did I find it groundbreaking, like people are saying, where they're crying? No, no, I didn't cry. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that I am, you know, uh, wasn't feeling the sentiment of the movie. I thought it was adorable. I didn't find it like tear jerking. Maybe I just wasn't in the right mode for that. But I, I, I thought it was so visually stimulating, so visually pleasing. Margot Ro is it Robbie or Roby? This woman is so damn beautiful. I don't know if there's anyone, you know, she plays stereotypical Barbie. That's her character. I don't know if there's anyone that is more, you know, in my mind, generically beautiful. Like if I have to say who's that pretty, like AI version of like pretty for me, it's Margot Robbie. I mean, she's stunning. Plus, I found out that she paid off her mom's mortgage when she found success. Plus, I found out that she speaks sign language or she can sign. She is stunning. She's talented. 
She did such a good job in that movie. I know it sounds silly because it's Barbie, but she did such a good job. Um, the cast was adorable. Obviously, I love Michael Sarah. He was in it and he played a really fun character. Ryan Gosling, star of the show. I know it's about Margot Robbie, but Ryan Gosling is the star of the show. This guy is so damn funny. And there's this whole like musical moment in the middle between him. Because, you know, I used to watch Ryan Gosling on uh, Mickey Mouse Club when I was a kid. Like that was my introduction to him, right? So he was on with Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. And I used to watch it after school every day. And so to see him in that like musical number vibe, it was really, really cute. I don't find Ryan Gosling like stunning. He, you know, some people think he's like heartthrob. He's never been it for me. He looks amazing. I mean, his abs are like boom, 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 boom. He's just not like, he's not the, the one. I have to think like who, which man right now off the top of my head is like the smoke show. You guys tell me, who do you think, when you think of like hot actors right now, today, in 2023, who is it? Ryan Gosling doesn't do it for me. But I can't think of who does. And I know there's got to be someone that does. But for whatever reason, like my brain isn't working for that. It's just because I like personality so much. Like I, oh my gosh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I've seen Jeffrey Dean Morgan a ton around Studio City. Um... Someone's, oh wait, Darlene says he's not Lance. <laughs> Those that have been around watching Daily Dose for a while, you know Darlene and Lance's love affair. Uh, Tim McGraw, not someone I would ever consider, but I'm glad you do. You guys have a lot. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is so cute, but again, not to me, not a smoke show, just like the personality really takes him up a level, right? Um, what am I missing? Cam from White Lotus. Oh, oh, was he the, the one that um that cheated on her with the stripper that was married to Megan Fahey like the pretty blonde girl because if that's him he was so cute what's his name I can't remember um Henry Cavill okay you guys have a lot Scott Eastwood Hemsworth brothers I don't know you you say Pete Davidson's personality but can't get past Pete Davidson. Mark Wahlberg is your hall pass. I've worked out with Mar Mark Wahlberg multiple times at F45. He's so cute and he's actually so nice. But like when I tell you he's my height, like I have a picture with him. I'll post it later in the Facebook room, group. He's like this much taller than me. Jason Momoa, Keanu Reeves. Guys, I, none of these have like really jumped out at me. I'm going to think about this. I'm going to think about it. Like, you know who I thought was so cute when I was watching the smart list documentary like all of a sudden I was into Will Arnett isn't that freaking weird that's weird maybe I'm into like the quirky one okay I'm gonna think about this Tatum Tatum Channing Tatum is very cute he's very cute um I know there's someone that like I loved Tim Riggins on Friday Night Lights oof okay wow you guys, I just saw Robert Pattinson, Paul Rudd. Like, we're really getting a lot of um, interesting choices here. That's why it's so subjective. So I want to know from you guys out there, if you're watching this on YouTube, who is your ideal hot man and who is your ideal beautiful woman? I told you, Margot Robbie, I have to think on the guy. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on that, thinking about it. Okay. You know this is going to be weird, but this is a reality show, like, moment. To me... Smoke show hottie, like perfection is Luke from Summer House. The, the wood chopping, let's start a fire. Mm, like a man. Okay. <laughs> Married. You know who's not wearing her wedding ring? Let's talk about Kyle Richards. Kyle Richards. I don't understand because two of my stories today have to do with Amazon lives. So what is Kyle Richards doing? I mean, what is Amazon live doing to these people that is getting them all on Amazon live? Ka okay, wait, I have to stop because I just saw, I thought Luke Perry was hot. When I tell you, I've, I named my son Dylan after Dylan McKay. It's not a joke. Okay. Not a joke. It, Kyle Richards is not wearing her ring. We've seen this now multiple times. We know our girl Face Reality 16 has done a deep dive on the ring situation. She used to wear her ring all the time, 
casually on red carpets, the big sparkler. And then around last year, when things started to get a little weird between them and Morgan Wade came into the picture, all of a sudden she's wearing a different ring that happens to match a, a ring Morgan Wade wears, et cetera, et cetera. So apparently all these pictures are being taken of her out and about running errands with her daughter, without her daughter, going to dinners, whatever, and she's not wearing the ring. People are, of course, going to question that. Now, I've been wearing my ring pretty solidly now for the last, like, probably year, but there was a good solid amount of time where I just, I took off my ring. I was getting, and I'll, I'll do this every once in a while because I get calluses. I do lift weights. I work out every single day and I get calluses and sometimes I get a little bit, um, like, irritated by the ring and... So I like, I'll wear it for maybe three, four months. I, I sleep in it. I shower in it. I work out in it. I do everything. And then I'll take it off because it'll start to bother me. And the thing is, oh my God, this is so funny. Harry Dubin, dead. Good one. Um, so then the, what will happen is my, my finger will get like irritated. So I'll take it off and then I'll forget about it. Or like I'll let my finger, my callus or whatever heal. So it's going to be maybe six months, I mean six weeks that I won't wear my ring again. And it's no reason. But the issue is I am not a public figure, right? I'm not a celebrity. And if you're a celebrity, and especially if you're a celebrity, when people are starting to question your marriage, if you want to be very clear that there's no issue, you either mention it really fast, like, guys, I'm not wearing my ring. I don't ever like force myself to wear my ring or you make sure that ring is on. She had this conversation. No, it doesn't bother Lance. Uh, the question from Darlene is, does it bother Lance when I don't wear the ring? He's never actually said it to me because it's literally like, it's a physical problem, right? It's not that I'm not wearing it because I'm annoyed with him or we got in a fight, right? But it's a physical issue. Here's what I think. So someone, I guess, mentioned it. All I saw was a little clip. The little clip is posted on a bunch of different accounts. I posted it in my stories yesterday. And so all I see is this really long, like spinning a tail, going through like all these scenarios of why she's not wearing her ring. It's such a strange description of why she's not. So she's explaining, you guys are seeing that I'm not wearing my ring and you know, the, I work out. And by the way, she says, you know, 400 times in this little clip, it's crazy. And I took it off and, uh, you know, I don't always put it back on. And then, you know, I see pictures and I'm just getting bagels and you know, and you know, and you know, and then she like goes into this other conversation about the people magazine article. And she talks about the statement that she had with her, with Mauricio and how her daughters were happy. So she basically does like word salad. Those who used to, um, you know, follow Dave Hollis, rest in peace. Like we know this, this word salad situation. It's people that just, you know, I'm doing it now. I'm saying, you know, just talking and talking just to say the words, but you're not actually saying anything. What would have been the best solution would have been saying, sometimes my ring bothers me when I work out and run daily errands. I'm not wearing a big, huge sparkling ring when I'm out and about every day. And that's it. You know, with the drinking conversation, so with her drinking situation, how she stopped drinking, she never talked about it. She never like mentions it really, you know, once in a while it will come up. And then she did that post, which I thought was great, which celebrated her one year not drinking. And then she posted in her story something that PK, actually Dorit's husband, which is so weird because she like PK comments on all her stuff and Dorit doesn't. And she doesn't talk to, about Dorit and her stories. Like there's never any sharing of anything. It's a little strange. I'm questioning what's going on there. I think we'll see it in the upcoming season. I do not think her and Dorit are on great terms, in my opinion. Um, but PK, but then it would be weird because why would PK send her stuff? Like if I'm fighting with a girlfriend, I don't think my husband's sending them like DMs of memes. Uh, who knows? So PK sent her a meme or like a graphic that basically said, why are you not drinking? And the answer is like five reasons why I'm not drinking. And it says, it's none of your fucking business. So why can't she react to that the same that she would react to the, her ring thing? Why wouldn't she just say, guys, I'm not wearing my ring because I don't always have to wear, wear my ring. And also it's none of your fucking business. Like that's what she could have said, right? So I find it really interesting that she went into this detail. And I did see one comment on one post that made me think, and it said, 
this is giving me a feeling, oh no, oh no, my kids are coming out. Oliver is going to come and bother me. I'm recording. I'm recording, honey. He came in anyway. No, Oliver, I'm recording. <laughs> Unlike Juicy Scoop, I don't have a team of 100 people or like a big crew of people. Um, so that will not be edited out. This is going to be like my Juicy Scoop moment where I'm like, <laughs> did you guys see that in Juicy Scoop today? We're going to talk about that more in a second. So um, <laughs> cut that out, Oliver. So, okay. <laughs> Clap your hands to edit it out later, but then never edit it out. So um, you guys are probably like, what? If you're not watching Juicy Scoop or paying attention, it's so funny. Um, so I just think it's weird. I think that she's teeing up for a season of Real Housewives that is going to be bad. And there's not really much going on. And this is like they're stringing people along here. It didn't make any sense. Next. Sheena also did an Amazon Live. Like I said, Amazon Live is like the new spot. And I don't understand. Are they selling their clothes? Like what's happening? Like Sheena has clothes behind her. Or they're just trying to get people to buy their links. Maybe I should do, oh, thanks, Siobhan. Maybe I should do a um, an Amazon Live. What should I sell? Like cups. <laughs> So Sheena talked about Graham slash hippie. Those of you that don't know the story, which I don't know if you could possibly not know the story at this point, but Graham has now received, I mean, sorry, James has now received Graham, the former, the dog formerly known as Graham, who used to be the dog that he had with Rachel, who's formerly known as Raquel. Okay. Meanwhile, we all know that uh, Rachel's parents gave the dog away to a shelter. I don't know how it got there, but it did. And eventually it went back to Vanderpump. And then Vanderpump came over to J James. And apparently this was filmed for the show. I was told this is going to be a big part of next season storyline that Vanderpump, Lisa Vanderpump walks down these stairs. She's, this is what Sheena says. She's wearing white. She looks like an angel. She's all glammed up. And here she is. She presents Graham the dog. Now, apparently, according to Sheena, Graham, who's now hippie is a drink. I don't know who fashion mom is. Now we have to look up fashion mom on TikTok. It's not Candace Cameron, but let's drink anyway. So um, apparently Graham used to be a very, very ill behaved dog, right? Sheena didn't say that he bit her, but she said that he was not the happiest. He would bark a lot. He was like a little bit challenging. Clearly he was an untrained dog. What she's saying, though, now that all of a sudden James has Graham slash Hippie, and Hippie is now a dog, a complete changed dog. Kind, sweet, loving, this. Is it possible that a dog completely changes behavior under different scenarios? Maybe. You tell me, you guys. I don't know. I don't think the dog was trained between, but something happened there. I don't know what. Maybe the dog never actually went to a shelter. Maybe the dog was at the California Doodle Rescue and was getting trained, and then Vanderpump found out about it. Who knows? I just know that if you're a biting, crazy dog the way that Rachel's parents made him out to be, which is like he literally bit, he bit me, he bit my husband, he bit the trainer, he bit the trainer's wife, he bit the shelter, he bit the everything, like... It seems weird that all of a sudden he's just not that. Like he bit 400 people and then within like two days, he was like, happy dog. Interesting. That's all interesting. Um, I promised you guys some Tom Sandoval news. So what I'm about to say right now, I'm going to preface this. I, I mentioned this in my Facebook group yesterday and you guys were like, oh my God, I need to know, I need to know, I need to know. Um, I have not heard this anywhere else but I have received information from a source, a woman who I used to work with, who is in the entertainment industry, okay? So I've known her for years and years and years. I don't believe her to be someone that would make this up or anything. Although I have no idea how these things work. So I'm just going to say what I heard from my source about what Tom Sandoval has been up to. 
Okay. We all know that Tom Sandoval did some sort of reality show, special forces unit. Like it was all up in the, in the press. We don't really know what the show was. I don't even know what it was called, but it feels like it was something like special forces, right? That was a reality show. Then he came off that reality show and immediately was into filming Vanderpump. Well, last week, and I was told this at the end of last week, and like I said, I have not confirmed it with anyone other than the source, and I have not seen it anywhere. And so I am just going to speak from my source, okay? And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I felt like if I have this information, I have to tell you guys. So Tom Sandoval allegedly is on the next season of Mass Singer, okay? They already taped it, and he got eliminated episode one. Tom Sandoval was on Mass Singer and got eliminated episode one. So Tom Sandoval is really pulling at strings to just be anywhere and everywhere he could possibly be. Tom Sandoval is, and I'm going to talk about this for a second. I am on team. Let's move on from being angry at Tom and Raquel. I know. I know. It's not popular. But I personally feel like whatever they've experienced through this process is enough. Does that make sense? Whatever the hate and the vitriol and the entire fans, like murdering them online and mental health and having to disappear and, you know, I'm done. I'm not mad at them anymore. What changed my mind officially was last week when they were all in Tahoe. And that's because... Sheena got really mad at the audience that got like confused seeing the picture of Sheena and Tom putting their arms around each other. And Tom and, and Sheena then got really mad with Lala and then Brock even got involved saying this is a show and they have to film and how dare you and we're just taking a picture and this and that. But let's talk about this. We didn't create the hate towards Sandoval. They did. Sheena did. Lala did. Katie did. James did. Am I crazy? Am I crazy, you guys? Do you think the world would have hated Sandoval nearly as much if all of those people kept their mouth shut and didn't say a word? I don't know. And I'm not talking like badly about any of them. I'm just saying they created the shit storm, the press storm, the Chris and Doty, uh, uh, yeah, the Chris and Dodies and the Jaxes and all of them, they created this big tumbleweed of anger towards Sandoval and Rachel. And we all jumped on because let's be honest, it was like car crash, can't look away, take us with, I, I, I was obsessive, right? Weren't we all obsessive over this? I'm not saying anything about what they did was right or wrong. I'm just saying this was all kind of like a media takeover by the Vanderpump Rules cast. And that's why we all became so angry. So it's hard for us to now see those pictures without saying, okay, well, if you're okay with them, then we're okay with them. If you're cool enough to film a scene with them and you're cool enough because it's a job, then like, I'm going to be cool enough too. Does that make sense? I feel like, I feel like it, it's, it's like, I'm not going to be more mad at him than you are. I don't care. This is, I, I'm, I didn't get cheated on. He's not my friend. Right? So I am, I've moved on from my anger towards Sandoval and from my anger towards Rachel. I feel real bad for Rachel at this point, especially with the Graham story. This Dog story has taken it now woo, for her. She was coming back strong. And now I feel like it's taken a new turn. Now, like you got the animal lovers, right? When, whenever you have said an animal lover, it's over. So I will say this. If I ran into Tom Sandoval out and about at a bar, at a restaurant, in the street, at Runyon Canyon, doing yoga, I would be nice. I would. I really would. I, 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 I have no reason to like 
be angrier than the cast. <laughs> You know what I mean? Now, I did listen to Not Skinny But Not Fat, which is a podcast. I listened to a few minutes of it today. And the host of it said something interesting. She said, I wonder if it's a little bit of a double standard that Sheena and Brock took a picture putting their arms around Tom Sandoval saying, this is a show. This is a job. We have to be filming together. How would they be if Rachel walked in the room? Would they also be copacetic with her? Would they also be cool to take a picture? Would they also like just say, well, what can we do? We have to hang out. It's a show. I find it a little bit of an interesting double standard. And I, and I think that um, that's going to be in like an always thing, right? Where the woman gets treated a certain way and the man gets treated a certain way. And, you know, that's it. But meanwhile, Ariana is living her best life. We need to move on from feeling bad. She's good. She's much better off, right? She's doing Love Island this week, which by the way, I still haven't finished episode one. When is the next episode out? Um, we'll, I will promise you I will watch it for you guys. Um, and then, you know, she's obviously doing fine. She has a boyfriend. She's making money. Da, da, da. She's doing fine. Fine, fine, fine. They're all doing fine. So that's how I feel about that. I don't know if Rachel's going to be back on Vanderpump Rules this season, you, all, you guys. I really don't. I really don't. McGee, Heidi, what are you telling me? Tell me, tell me. Mass Singer not being filmed. You tell me everything you know because I'm telling you everything. Um, forgive and forget, move on, people. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, like, nice to not be so angry. Plus, like, we, like, it was the best few months of our lives. <laughs> like, reality TV watchers, right? We were obsessed. Doesn't film until winter. Well, let me find out. Does it only film one time a year? I'm going to text and find out. I'm going to get more details. But I just got that information and I was like, I'm going to share it. I don't think she would lie about it. I'm going to find out. I'm going to text her right now. Let's find out. Let's find out while we're talking. Um, what am I doing again? Oh, yeah. I was almost going to say her name. That would suck. When did they film? Um, yes, this was the text. Guess who was on Mass Singer that also got eliminated the first night? And by the way, I'm not on. I'm not on the show. I didn't sign an NDA. So there you go. All right, we'll find out. Okay, clap, click, move on to the next story. <laughs> is that is that where? <laughs> Heather McDonald had an episode of Juicy Scoop today. If you, those of you that are listening to this also have, um, are Juicy Scoopers, I know I have a lot of like um, overlapping fans. Uh, Heather McDonald did an episode today, and the reason why I'm doing the clap is it's on the audio version and the video version on YouTube, and she's got like a really big audience. So I find it really funny, but she starts a story about I think it's about a real housewife of Atlanta. I think it's about candy or I don't remember what exactly, but she's in the middle of talking about it. And then she's like, you know what, Drake? And Drake is her son's name. She's like, you know what, Drake? Uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about. So let's just cut to the next story, okay? I'm going to clap and then let's cut to the next story. Let's cut to the next story. <laughs> and then she starts talking about Nene Leaks. Meanwhile, all of it is still in the episode. The claps, the I don't want to do it. I don't know. What should we do? The claps. I mean, it was... It's unreal. And it's been hours since it's been out because I think she releases it. It was about Kenya. Yeah. She releases it in like at like two in the morning or whatever. <laughs> I died. So you guys have been really talking to me about Heather McDonald and Justin Martindale. Those of you guys that don't know, Justin Martindale. Um, oh, I just got a text back. Last week was the first week. He was the first one that got eliminated. This is all alleged, you guys. So I didn't make it up. Um, so Heather McDonald has been doing her podcast, Juicy Scoop, for about eight years now, I think. Seven, eight years. I am not a long-time Juicy Scoop listener. I'm more of like last year, maybe, here and there. I got more invested during the Jeff Lewis and Megan Weaver and Heather McDonald drama because I'm a chump, 
right? I love Jeff Lewis. Jeff Lewis is my entry into all of this and is the reason why I know so many of you guys. You found me through this. Hello, welcome, uh, Juicy Scoopers, you know, that you you found me through this. A lot of you were Team Megan. A lot of you were Team Heather. It was a crazy, crazy, it's still to this day my most watched episode is when I talk about the Heather McDonald drama. I don't know. So essentially up until then, I didn't know anything about her really other than that she used to be on Chelsea Laley. I'm a former casting director. She's a comedian. She's She used to audition. She used to be in that circuit. So I used to have her name on lists. I never personally met her. I never auditioned her. Um, but I knew of her as a comedian. And that was that. She has these guests that are on her weekly shows. I think she has one or two a week. And there are other comedians like Sarah Colonna is a guest, Spencer Pratt, Chris Fanjola, love them all. Justin Martindale, love, like she has a bunch of different rotating guests that come up on, oh my God, <laughs> best comment ever. I just, best comment ever. Ray just said, did she come up with you? Which is a nod to Bethany Frankel and Andy Cohen. And those of you know that, like, and I'm going to talk all about that in my Patreon episode. Bethany Frankel said, you know, I, 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 I came up with Andy. <laughs> I came up with him. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, Heather and I came up together. No, we did not. She was, she was farther along for sure. So she has this buddy, Justin Martindale, also a comedian who is a guest host on her show. And he's very funny and he's very likable. And I really know him through her. I don't know him, Chris Vangiola. I don't know them well on their own. Um, she had a comment. So I'm going to get really much deeper in this like I said on my Patreon episode tomorrow, I'm not doing this as like a come and pay me money. I'm doing this as a, I don't want to say too much in a public show because I don't want to offend juicy scoopers and get myself in this host of trouble. But something was said about this movie, Sound of Freedom. Now, I am not getting into this. Do you understand? Politics do not belong on this show, okay? That's it. I'm not talking about that. All I know is that this movie apparently um, aligns with a lot of very right wing conservative people. And there's a lot of things that are said about some of the filmmakers and the lead of the movie. That's all I'll say about that. But the movie is about child trafficking. Okay. So it's a, it's a very serious topic. And apparently Justin Martindale said something in the podcast where he kind of laughed it off and made a joke, something along the lines about Barbie and sex trafficking. He's a comedian, right? This is where we always draw the line. Where are we being funny? Where are we not? Her fans, I guess, went nuts on him in their Facebook group, which I'm not part of in their, um, Patreon, I don't even know, wherever they do it. And Justin Martindale felt highly attacked by this whole huge group of super, super conservative people who felt very um, offended by, I'm so, I'm so trying to toe the line here, you guys. I do not want this to become like a political moment, like at all. Please know that. Please, please, please don't come after me for any of this. I'm just talking about what I know or what I've seen. Um, so Justin Martindale felt attacked by a lot of the comments, did not feel like Heather had his back. And before you know it, he canceled a few of his tour dates. Yes, I agree. I thought it was a joke too. He canceled a few of his tour dates with her. They were supposed to be in Napa. They were supposed to be somewhere else. And he said on his YouTube show, I just need a break from Heather. Meanwhile, Heather has not mentioned it at all. She has not Bethany mentioned at all. And she is going on as normal. I mean, maybe a little drunker than normal, but as normal. If you watched her stories this weekend. Um, and it's a weird situation because Heather McDonald's fan base is like really split, I think. I think she has a lot of super, super liberal loving, tolerant, gay, loving, gay, um, you know, open type people, rainbow type people, 
watching her. And then um, she also has a huge group of super, super right-wing conservative people that don't maybe subscribe to the same values, right? And Heather herself, from what I've heard, like I said, I don't know, tends to be more on that side, the latter. And so because of that, it's going to offend people. When she talks about those things, it's going to offend these people. And when she talks about these things, maybe it's going to offend these people. So it's tricky. Her fan base doesn't necessarily align with a Justin Martindale in all ways. Does that make sense? I am trying so hard to not get sued. I'm trying so hard to not get uh, um, offended, like uh, not offended, um, political or offensive. I never want that to be. I am here to give you, wait, I offended you, Lourdes, or someone else did. I, I am here to just give you I was going to say the scoop, the juicy scoop, but I'm not. I'm here to give you the daily dose, right? That's it. I, and that's my goal. But I will be going more deep into this story, into the Bethany of it all, the Bethany clause, and um, a couple other things on my Patreon episode tomorrow. Hopefully, if you jump into Patreon, you decide to stick around because there's a lot of fun perks there. And I love chatting with you guys in a more safe space. Um we will talk about it as we move on. I could be wrong about some things that I said. If I am, don't kill me in the comments. I want this to be a happily loving space. I am, uh, I bring, I try to bring levity and fun to this gossip and not come from an angry place. So I love you guys. And I hope that you, uh, uh you know, respect me in comments <laughs> and, um, jump in and let me know your thoughts in a respectful way. Please don't make me cry. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you later. Have a great night.